All right, New York Giants fans, this is Tim. This is New York Giants, right? Talk powered by Online Big Blue LLC. Want to talk about the state of the Giants and how we've gotten to where we are, how we've gotten to this madness, how we've gotten to this mess. A lot of people want to say, I like to blame Daniel Jones, but you can't solely lay the blame on him. There is a, there is a, a collective, a Borg, we might want to say, of people that are responsible for where we are. And we really need to lay the blame and I'm go- we're going to do this, and we're going to do it right. Because some of the people that we're going to talk about, you're going to be like, well, yeah, yeah, kind of, you're kind of right about that. We may have to go back a little ways. We have to go back to the future to know where we are here in the present. You know what really sucks right now in the present? Your bills. Bills are just going up. Inflation's going up. You got to sacrifice stuff in your life just to be to where you used to be. Try cutting things out so you can do something else it sucks it really does because life should always be about quality that's why i love mint mobile you know that this video is in partnership with mint they offer premium wireless service for 15 bucks a month get high speed data unlimited talk text on the largest 5g network you can even bring up your own phone and and your existing number and contacts and sacrifice nothing Nothing at all. I use Mint all the time. You know that. I've been with Mint customer now for over a year. I have three Mint phones. The best service that I've, that I've like I said, I can only speak to myself, but the best service that I personally have had, fastest internet that I've had, it's great. And you're only paying 15 bucks a month. And you know, it, it just kills me though, because when you look at the big wireless, big wireless always says, you know what? You can't switch services. It's too hard. <laughs> you have to stay with us forever. Switching to Mint is super easy. And that's thanks to the digital eSIM cards, which most phones take now. You sign up, activate immediately, right from your phone, right from the comfort of your home. If your phone doesn't use an eSIM card, you know what? Mint's going to ship you a SIM card for free. How much easier do you need it to be? So if you want to save some money without sacrifice, go to mintmobile.com backslash big blue. Also, the link is in the description. Get premium wireless service for 15 bucks a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's mintmobile.com backslash big blue. You know I love mint. You know I use it. You know I you know I extol the virtues of it because it works. And it works extremely well. Mintmobile.com backslash big blue. 15 bucks a month. Save some money. And that's 15 bucks a month when you purchase the three-month plan. I've said it before. I'll wait. I'm gonna hold off the show while you guys go to mintmobile.com backslash big blue. I'll just wait here. I got, I got I got nothing to do because the Giants are just not very good. But Mint Mobile is. When you take a look at the state of the fair of the Giants right now, and I've said this before, you see a collection of talent. And I and I honestly think this collection of talent is just not put together well. I've been saying this since the start of the season. This is a cut and paste team. It's like we've cut things from other places and other teams and we're pasting them into a system that may not work or may not be conducive to the talents of the players that we're bringing in, and we're hoping that it's going to work. Great example, Daniel Jones. You go out and get Malik Neighbors when you know your quarterback can't throw more than 15 yards. And then you're stunned and befuddled that that the Neighbors' longest pass is 30-plus yards. Well, when you have a quarterback that doesn't look down the field, that kind of happens. Same thing with Jalen Hyatt. Same thing with Darius Slayton. Same thing with Wondell Robinson. You go out and get these weapons. You go out and retain these weapons for a quarterback whose system is a dink and dunk. Not even, I don't even want to give it the the moniker of the West Coast offense because this isn't the West Coast offense. This is the East Coast shuffle because you shuffle four or five yards off the line of scrimmage and he may throw you the ball. It's a collection of talent that doesn't fit skilled players of talent. The same thing on the defense. You went out and get, how about Brian Burns? Why? You got Kayvon Thibodeau, who was younger on the other side of the line, and they're identical players. You're going to drop $120 million on Burns, and in a couple of years, you're going to have to pay Kayvon. So what, you're going to have these two guys that are similar skill sets that don't really fit well and mesh well playing together? Burns has been playing together with Kayvon not being there. He's playing better with Aziz Ojolari. But he doesn't fit the system. It's the same thing. Our linebackers don't fit this. Listen, I give Shane Bowen all credit in the world. I thought he was going to use the same philosophy that he used with, with the Titans. 
which is that Ben not break defense. I'm only going to rush five, but he's literally figured out, and I give him all the kudos and all the crops, uh, props in the world, he's literally figured out that he has to go after the quarterback. He's got to generate a rush, not with it just his four down linemen. He's got to bring the safeties in. He's got he's to be a little bit Wink-esque, and that's what he's been. But at the time, you brought in Shane Bowen. And his ta- he Luckily for us, Shane Bowen f- designed and cultivated a system that fit his talent. We can't say that on offense. And at the end of the day, it's just going to continue to roll downhill. Now, the first person you always want to blame is ownership. first person you want to always blame is John Mara because it starts there. John Mara hires the general manager. John Mara runs all the football operations. He's resp- he signs the checks when we get out the free agents, you know, when he would go through the draft. He, he does all that fun stuff. But at times you look at John Mara, and he's not going to be – He's not going to be Wellington. He's not going to be his father. He's our grandfather. Or wherever, I forget what he is. He's not going to be that. He's not going to be Wellington Mara. He's never going to be that. But John Mara does have two Super Bowls to his credit. John Mara has understood at times, I'm not going to do the James Dolan philosophy, early James Dolan, and get involved in everything, Jerry, and a.k.a. also Jerry Jones, but I'm going to let my football guys run shit. But I'm going to be kind of fan-esque at times. But he has tried... To step away at times. He, he, he's turned the reins over to Jerry Reese, to Dave Gellerman, and now to Joe Shane. And we could blast Dave Gellerman all we want. That he was terrible at this, he was terrible at that. But one thing he did do was draft. A lot of the players, we've talked about it before, the key cornerstone players that Joe Shane has brought back are Gellerman guys. Are guys that Gellman went out you t- and, and cultivated. And then we also didn't keep Xavier McKinnon. We also didn't keep Saquon Barkley. We only know what they're doing elsewhere. But these are guys that he brought in. He was Dave Gellman was terrible at free agency. He has been terrible at free agency since his Carolina days. He only hit once when the Carolina Panthers went 15 to 1 and went to the Super Bowl. He hit on free agency, he brought in a bunch of older guys that just meshed. He was unable to do that here. But he was starting the crescendo, he was starting the slide. Because we saw what happened at the end of Jerry Reese's tenure. Jerry Reese, we all know at one point in time, was the drafting wizard. He allowed the likes of 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 wonderful draft class for 2007 to 2011. Guys that contributed, guys that came. They may not have had the longevity, but they came in, they contributed, they came in and played. They came in and were part of the organization, part of the system, but it was his later drafts that got him fired. It was also his overspending and free agency with the likes of getting Jackrabbit and Snacks and Olivier Vernon, you spent like four nine four hundred ninety seven billion billion in free agency, and it just didn't work. It worked for one season when you went 11-5, and five, but then everything went downhill. You also didn't see how the foresight to replace Eli Manning or find his replacement earlier. And you kind of left that up to the next general manager, who, in his infinite wisdom and gentleman, went and drafted Daniel Jones at six thinking he was going to be the savior, thinking he was going to be the Messiah. But that was wrong. That wasn't even close. We all know this. That wasn't even close to correct. And then then we just started going back downhill again. Everything just started falling apart again during the Gentleman era. It was a bad hire with Joe Judge. It was because of the fact that nobody really wanted. We got we got turned down by Matt Rule. Nobody wanted. We got played by Matt Rule, and we saw how well that worked out in Carolina. No one wanted Joe Judge. They basically took their fifteenth choice when they hired Judge, and everything just dropped off the planet. The only smart thing that they did was to get rid of Joe Judge when they did, because you still had some talent on the team. You just couldn't put anything together. And that's the problem with this team. We just, like I said, we're a cut and paste team because we can never build anything. We can never build any continuity. We can't put things together. And when we try, they just go horribly wrong. And we take a look at this organization. We take a look at the system. They ask a lot of the fans and they ask a lot of season ticket holders. You could see my, my season ticket holder package over there. There's cameras reversed today. You can see my season ticket holder package. Yeah, they did a nice job sending out the uh, the season ticket holder gift this year. Last year, we got uh, four plastic cups and a poster and a pennant from two years ago. But at the end of the day, you're asking a lot from people that are spending all this amount of money, all this cash to go to these games, to go eight, nine games a year and show nothing in return. And then we decide to go a different direction. 
We want the direction. We bring it in the old hand, the old, the old man and gentleman, that seasoned veteran, and went and got a newbie in Joe Shane. And we all know Joe Shane. <laughs> People say I'm a genius, but how hard is it to screw up five and seven? Well, you did it. Kayvon Thibodeau is not the player that we thought he was coming out of Oregon. There was always those speculation. There was always that talk that he dogged it at Oregon. I didn't believe it. Because what I saw and what I saw from him playing at Oregon, I never really seen him take plays off. But there was those rumblings. There was those silent rumblings during the draft. And then you totally just whiffed on Evan Neal. And I don't know if it's if it's now come to a point where Evan Neal can never play here because of the fact that he's got such a bad rap that he's so deep in the doghouse with this management that he'll he, I don't I'm not sure if he can ever recover. You would think with the likes of Andrew Thomas going out, you would take your seventh overall pick who was left tackle in college and put him at his natural position and see what happens. But no, we go with, we go with Jonathan Azuda who should be Joe Azuzu. Maybe he should go sell some cars and it didn't work out. And once again, we take a look at the draft. Everyone's talking about how wonderful he, I love everyone's a Joe Shane really hit on this draft class. Okay. Well, he took Malik neighbors and Malik neighbors is already complaining I jokingly told people by week six he was going to ask, to ask for a trade. He's already come out and he's become, become a little truculent with the media, telling them, hey, watch the tape. Watch the tape. I was open. He knew it was. And now Brian Dable is allowing him or is facilitating him to be this, this voice against his quarterback, against his organization, instead of handling it right away. He basically looked like he's not going to handle it, Dable is. So you're allowing your first-year wide receiver, who you turned around and gave number one to, which was the retired number. And we've talked about this before. It wasn't just the first retired number for the Giants. It was the first retired number in NFL history. And we gave it to a guy that has done nothing yet. He didn't earn it. And I think we're, we're sitting here with management allowing these players who haven't earned certain things to feel entitled, and I think because of the fact that he's got immense talent, Malik Neighbors, we are kind of letting him run a little bit of a muck. And we saw how well that worked out with OBJ. And I never thought OBJ was that bad. I never thought anything. I never thought his shenanigans or his antics were that terrible. I just thought they were annoying. I didn't think they were bad. But that's what they. That's kind of what they're heading towards right now. And but you, if you look at Joe Shane's other draft class, they're just they're just not good. That's my mint mobile phone. That's how good. I'm I'm basically in a bunker. And I'm getting text messages. That's how great my mobile service is. Getting text I'm getting text messages from the bunker. But again, you look at this and you see there's really no accountability. The Tay Banks play was terrible. The Tay Banks play, he, yeah, he definitely dogged it. 100% dogged it. He's probably going to get his ass chewed out and reamed. But then I noticed also on Sunday, Bobby Okereke, and I pointed it out in, in the live stream, slowed up a couple times as well in plays, kind of stopped running as well. And this is Bobby Okereke. This is our big free agent linebacker signing where we actually paid $5 million more for an off-the-ball linebacker than we should have. But sometimes when you're a poor team, you have to overpay in free agency to get guys to come here. But at the end of the day, you take a look at this and you're just like, this, this, is, just, this is just pathetic. Somebody's head's got to roll. Someone's got to take the blame. I personally think that they're going to do the giant thing that they've always done. They've already they've already started it. They fire a position coach, which they did in Bobby Johnson. They fire Wink Martindale, or they fire a coordinator, which they did in Wink Martindale. Then they fire the head coach, and then you give the general manager one more draft. At the end of the day, in my mind, this whole mess and where we are now and how we're going to be probably two years in the future in the same spot is because of Joe Shane. To me, Joe Sh James base James Williams made a joke that Joe Shane should have been fired after last week's game. Should have been should have been chicken. Should have been fired. And I kind of thought about it and said, you know what? He probably should have. Because this whole mess starts from the top. This whole mess is the architecture of all this was put together by Joe Shane. The issues with the salary cap, the bad trades, even going back to Waller, the bad free agency, such you know, free agency signs such as Paris Campbell, 
the, these these things that he's done to put this team on the map. He talks about how he wanted to build this team the right way, have the building blocks, and build this team through the draft and augment it through free agency. He said all the right things, but he always does everything opposite. He talks about he wants to have cap management, but somehow he signs Daniel Jones to $160 million. Then he also puts the, he literally parallels the contracts of Andrew Thomas and Dexter Lawrence together when he didn't have to. The worst thing that could have happened was that 7-2 and two start and that 2-5-1 and one finish because the Giants thought they were somewhere they weren't. They got away from the philosophy of building the way they wanted to build. They went out and started spending money when they pretty, probably should have built from within like good teams do. Green Bay Packers, great example. Baltimore Ravens, great example. Yes, they bring in free agencies, but they build through the draft. And Joe Shane's drafts have not been that great have not produced these high-quality players outside of here and there. And his free agencies have just been horrible outside of Bobby Okereke, but now Bobby Okereke is kind of on the slides a little bit. I think it's the Crustables. Sitting there eating his white man rich Crustable food while the rest of us are eating regular peanut butter and jelly. Us lunch pail guys. But I really do think that it all starts with Joe. And it's all going to finish with Joe because I think I, I'm scared to say that they may fire Dable and give Shane another draft. His quarterback decision was to keep Daniel Jones. I've said this before. When Daniel Jones inked that $160 million contract, it was no longer a Gettleman guy. He was now a Joe Shane guy because Joe Shane was saying, we can win with this quarterback. Even though no one in the league, not, neither of the other 31 teams were ever going to give Daniel Jones any money comparable to what he got from the Giants. But the Giants went out and overspent. They always That's the other thing Joe Shane likes to do. He likes to compete against himself. You look at John Runyon Jr. The first thing in John Runyon Jr., we heard we're going to the Jets. Throw more money at him. You got Ellie Moore Fudd. He's the top target at the Arizona Cardinals. Throw more money at him. Drew Locke. We're only, the ceiling for Drew Locke is $4 million. We're going to give him five. <laughs> the running back over the Packers, Jacobs, he basically said it best. I went to Green Bay because, yeah, I went to Green Bay because they gave me money, but that they didn't give me the most money. It was the team. It was the culture. It was the head coach. They sold me on Green Bay, Josh Jacobs. They sold him on Green Bay. We can't say, and that's in Wisconsin, guys. There's not a lot to do in Green Bay. And it's cold and it snows. You can't sell people on New York. You can't sell people on the Mecca. You, your thought process is Joe Shane is just to give everyone more money to convince him to come here, to come to, come to this organization. That's ludicrous. Sell people on the legacy of the Giants, of the history of the Giants, of everything that they can do in the Mecca, how you're building for the future. No, all the like I said, the window into the looking glass was was that horrible hard knocks. We saw Joe Shane's negotiating skills. We saw the fact that he just totally misreads everything. You know what? No one, no one's going to give uh, Saquon Barkley any money, and I don't need a forty-five billion dollar quarterback handing off to a twelve million dollar running back. Yeah, the guy that ran for one hundred seventy-six yards and bowled over Dane Belton. And then I love it because he goes, and I love it goes. Oh, my sources are saying he's going to the Bears. Yeah, and then he ends up in Philadelphia. He's Same thing with the Daniel Jones market. People were saying that Daniel Jones might get Mitchell Trubisky money when he came out after that playoff run. The Mitchell Trubisky money he got on that second contract when he went to, I believe, Buffalo. He misreads the markets. He misreads everything. But don't worry. You had a certain segment of fans that was so in love with him because he put Neon in the draft room. Everything starts at the top. You can't fire the owner. The general manager is in charge of hiring the coach, finding the players, negotiating the contracts, working through the working through the draft, and doing everything else. And Joe Shane's just not the guy. He hasn't really truly done anything right of note besides re-sign Gettleman players. And then his big pick in banks, all of a sudden people are no longer unenamored with, and we have a problem with Malik Neighbors. T. Brad said it best. We need to get a Joe Must Go shirt going because I agree with that thousand percent. And as always, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to ring that bell. 
and I'm out of here.